Welcome to module 29 of research methods and statistics. Today we will learn about writing a research document. Reporting what you have found out is an essential aspect of any research project. Unless you are able to make the findings of your research public, your research has no value. Any research study done as part of an academic qualification will require you to write up the entire research process including the results and findings and you will be evaluated on the quality of the research document or the thesis that you produce. The objectives today are to learn to write a report for a quantitative research, to write a report for a qualitative research and to write a report for a non-academic audience. What do we mean by a research document? A research document is a record that contains details related to the research study conducted by you the researcher. It could comprise of a single page or it could run into hundreds of pages depending on your research project. The process of preparing this record is called documentation. Why is documentation important? Documentation helps in planning. It acts as a tool for monitoring and evaluation. It can assist in developing theory and it can provide evidence or proof to substantiate the claims that you are making. One aspect of writing is understanding and setting the tone for your research document. So how do you do that? It depends, the tone or style of writing depends on three things. One, the type of research that you have undertaken. The style of reporting a quantitative research is very different from that of a qualitative research study. So that is the first thing. Second is the audience for whom you are writing. Are you writing for a journal, an academic audience or a non-academic audience. Your style would depend on that. Academic audience would include a journal, journal articles, theses. These are examples of academic writing. Non-academic writing could be an evaluation report for a sponsor on a project, on a program that they have funded. Okay? Reports written for non-academic audiences are also sometimes known as technical reports. The third thing that influences the tone is your own style of writing. It is essential that you be true to yourself. Use the kind of language and style that you are comfortable with. Don't try to copy somebody else's style. Do not simply use difficult words because you want to create an impression. You will create an impression but unfortunately it will be the wrong one. Another question that comes up in students minds is how many drafts will you need? You will need as many drafts as required. Be prepared to write, rewrite and revise many times. You might need to write each chapter multiple times. In fact, you might need to write a couple of drafts before you take the chapter to your research guide or your boss. And then you might need to revise the content till he or she is satisfied. Once the content is finalized, you will need to edit the chapters for grammar and other language and formatting related matter. Fine. Please make sure that you allot sufficient time for writing. If you are doing a thesis, make sure you have 8 to 9 months to write it up. Don't uh, plan to write it up at the very last minute if you are doing a PhD thesis. A master's thesis, you would need 2 to 3 months minimum to write it up. So plan accordingly. Reporting on research studies. Like we mentioned earlier, we will be talking about three types of research documents. A quantitative research document, a qualitative research document, and a research document for a non-academic audience. The tone and style for all three will be different. Yet all three have certain common aspects. We will first discuss these common aspects. First, all research reports must have a title page. The title page will contain obviously the title of your research project, the details of your research team and the date or at least the year of submission. For a research project that you are submitting as part of a requirement for a degree, you need to add the name of your research guide or supervisor and details of your college university. If it is a non-academic research, if you are writing a research for a non-academic audience, then add names of partner organizations involved in the study and logo as ap applicable. Please spend a lot of thought thinking about your title because that is what will capture your reader's attention. Your title should be short, preferably 15 to 20 words. It should inform the reader about the main focus of the research in terms of the method 
and respondent group. For example, a survey of child laborers in metro cities, baseline survey of demonstration site for blank that is okay, whichever place for preschool programs in tribal areas of Maharashtra. Needs assessment of ABC village in XYZ state. Uh, an, a survey on maternal and child health in three tribal hamlets in Thane district. These are a few examples. Qualitative researchers could consider a two part title, something that's creative, that expresses the soul of the research. Um, and then you have a subtitle th that is descriptive, which will tell you more about the research methods and the research met uh, groups. For example, my dream house. That's the first creative aspect of the title. Impact evaluation of a cost effective housing solution program in rural Maharashtra. A second example would be enhancing road safety amongst children. An action research on prevention of unintentional injuries amongst children in Mumbai. When you're looking at a title for a non-academic audience, you need an attention catching title. It need not provide too much information on the research methods or the respondent group. For example, voices of invisible children, understanding perceptions of child workers rescued during raids in Mumbai. Child speak for child rights, findings of a survey. Mapping nowhere children, registering the birth of children in vulnerable circumstances in Mumbai. So these are a few examples. Now we come to an abstract. Okay, first you have a title page, now we come to an abstract. Your abstract is a concise summary of your research. It is always written in third person and in past tense because it is a factual account of the research that you have completed. Best time to write the abstract is at the end of your entire research report. The length of the abstract is between 150 and 300 words depending on the length of your entire research report. The abstract should cover the research problem, the rationale, the type of study, whether it was qualitative, quantitative or mixed, the methods of data collection and analysis and the key findings, one or two at least and the implications of these in the light of other researches. There are two examples of abstracts on the screen. The first one is an abstract from a PhD thesis and is thus an abstract for an academic audience. The second one is for, from a study for a non-academic audience. These are just to give you an idea of how abstracts are written. Now we come third part which is the list of contents. List of contents should be presented in a clear, organized, logical and systematic manner. All the chapters, sections and subsections should be clearly mentioned. It should also contain a separate list of tables, list of figures and list of annexures or appendixes. The abstract, the foreword and the acknowledgements or any such other information that precedes the list of contents need to be mentioned here. The page numbers for these are normally in Roman numerals. There is an example of a list of contents on your screen. Whether or not you decide to number your sections or subsections is an individual one. Now we see two other uh, examples. The first is an example of list of contents where the subsections are numbered and the second is a list of contents where the subsections are not numbered. The next aspect of is your references. These are part of the common requirements of all research reports. The references is presented at the end of the research document after the concluding chapter and before the annexures. Please ensure that you include all references cited in your research document in this section. Commonly used styles are APA, Chicago style and Harvard style. Check with your university or your organization which format of referencing they prefer and then do it based on those lines. Now we look specifically at the quantitative report. A quantitative report structure does not allow for much flexibility. It is usually written entirely in third person. We will discuss now the different aspects, different sections of a quantitative research report. The first is the introduction chapter, which is written in third person and in past tense. This states the research problem clearly and in a succinct manner. It discusses the rationale and states the hypothesis. 
it presents a background and provides a context to the research problem. It summarizes the key gaps in the literature review. It explains how this research will fill the gaps. It gives the research approach and methodology. It addresses ethical issues and presents an outline of the entire research document. The second chapter is the literature review chapter. This is also written in third person and in past tense because it deals with existing information and previously uh, conducted researches. So, all things that already exist. So, it is written in past tense. Ideally, this chapter should be written before your data analysis and you review it after your analysis to ensure that your findings are related to the information covered in this chapter. This chapter should contain the following information. What information is already available on this topic? What can you say critically about what is already known? What are the gaps in existing literature? And how does your research fill these gaps? The next chapter is the methods chapter. This chapter is also in third person and past tense. It focuses on describing what you as the researcher did for completing this research. For example, this research aimed at understanding the correlation between school abandonment and the incidences of child labor. A closed ended survey questionnaire was used to collect data from 150 respondents. So, you can see that it is written in third person and in past tense. The aim of a methods chapter is to describe in great detail all the steps, actions taken by you to conduct your research so a reader can actually replicate the study. In this chapter, you need to explain how each of the objectives of your study was achieved. Typically, the method section has four subsections which cover for details on the sample universe, study population, sample selection, that is the first. Second, on the instruments or measures of data collection which detail the tools that were used for data collection, what these are and why were these used. Third, procedures used in your research which explains how the data collection was carried out and the fourth subsection which focuses on data analysis where you explain how you pro processed and analyzed the data. You need to specify which instrument was used for which objective and how the data from each was analyzed, especially if you are using a mul uh, multiple instruments for example, um, observation and survey questionnaire. So, then you need to say the observation was used to get information related to aims A 1, 2 and 3 whereas the survey questionnaire answered que uh, the aims 4 and 5 and then explain how each of these were used. Okay? Please ensure that any statistical techniques that you have used are explained in enough sufficiently and provide details of computer software used for analysis where appropriate. Now you come to your results chapter. Results chapter is written in third person and past tense. It presents the findings of your study in a logical and sequential order using objective and factual manner. So, you write it in a very objective and factual way. Okay. Use graphs, tables, charts and non-textual data to help the reader understand the data and pro clarify the main points that you are making. Provide information on the statistical techniques used to analyze the data. The style of writing here has to be simple, precise and concise. Describe any trends that you note, but do not discuss these over here. Okay? Do not try to explain any negative results if they occur in this chapter. Explanations and discussions will be dealt with in the next chapter, which is the discussion chapter. This chapter deals with the interpretation of your results. Here is where you explain trends and also discuss why your results may be negative. This is also written in third person, but this is written in present tense because it is what is happening right now. It must be presented in a very logical manner and should be very comprehensive. It covers the following, the interpretation of your results. How do your results provide answers to your research questions? Do they support the predicted results or do they negate it? What could be the reasons for this? Second, relationship to earlier findings. Does your research reveal anything new about what was, what you were investigating, about the problem being investigated? What do your results say when compared to that in the literature review? 
The third thing you do is describe trends. This is where you discuss the trends that you noted in the results chapter. You should also explain any unexpected res results as well as any statistically insignificant findings as well. Significant findings you will, but if there are any insignificant findings, you need to explain those as well. All your explanations need to be in terms of the theoretical framework that you have cited in your literature review. The next thing you need to do is discuss the implications of your results. What do your results mean? What are the highlights of your study? Point out results that you find important. Discuss the extent to which the results have helped fill in the gaps that you pointed out in the literature review chapter. And then discuss the limitations. Clearly mention the limitations of your study. Any biases that were unavoidable should also be stated here along with how you try to ensure that these biases did not un affect your study. Then the final aspect of a quantitative research is your conclusion chapter. This is the last chapter. This is also written in third person and in present tense. The focus of this chapter is to summarize the results. You need not provide statistical data here, just a narrative summary is sufficient. Summarize your learnings. What did you learn from this research that you did not know previously? Provide suggestions and recommendations on what can be done to improve this situation being studied and also provide ideas for future research. That completes the quantitative report. Now we discuss the qualitative research report. The qualitative report can be written in first person. In participatory action research and action, uh, action research studies, it is in fact preferable to write the entire research in first person. Since the research method is flexible, there is no rigid rule on how the document is written. When I wrote my PhD thesis, I wrote the introduction, methodology and conclusion in first person and the other chapters in third person. A fellow student wrote her action research project which involved the use of drama in education as a play with acts and scenes instead of chapters and sections. Yet another student wrote the entire methodology as a series of dialogues, verbal and written, between the student and the research guide. Qualitative research reports allow you to be creative. But there are certain uh, sections in a typical qualitative research report which we will now discuss. The first is the introduction chapter. This can be written in first person and in present tense. It should be between 5 and 20 pages long depending on the length of your complete document. It should cover the following. Why have you chosen this topic for research? Why are you interested in this topic? The kind of research approach or discipline that you utilized. The research question, problems, aims. The layout of your entire document. Additionally, you may explain where you fit into your research. This is especially useful in action research projects where you are supposed to explain how you the researcher, practitioner researcher fit into the entire research. The second chapter is the literature review chapter. The reasons for writing the literature review are the same as in a quantitative research. The structure is slightly different and should contain the following. What information is already available on the topic? What can you say critically about what is already known? Has anyone else done anything that is exactly the same as you? Has anyone else done something that is related to what you are doing? How and why does your work fit into all that has been done till now? Why is your research worthwhile keeping in mind all that has been done already? When you are writing your literature review, show respect for available literature. Be focused and critical. Avoid description of things and, and showcase your interpretation of the literature. The next chapter is the methods chapter. The methods chapter is the next chapter. As with all other chapters in a qualitative research, this is also in first person. But this is written in past tense since it has already been completed. Point, uh, you need to include answers to the following in your methods chapter. How did you go about your research? What overall strategy did you adopt and why? What design did you use and why? Why this and why not something else? What was your theoretical framework? What were the tools that you used for data collection? Why were these chosen? Who were your respondents? 
how did you select them why these respondents and not somebody else what was your analysis plan and how did you deal with ethical issues such as confidentiality and informed consent then we move on to the data analysis chapters you may have more than one data analysis chapter in fact if you have multiple respondents it may be a good idea to write separate chapters for different groups of respondents or even different aims of your study the that these chapters focus on telling the story of your research any data analysis chapter has three sections an introduction which covers the general area of the chapter it locates the gaps in knowledge that the chapter addresses explains how the cap chapter will fill in these gaps and provides an overview of what is actually in this chapter a main section which provides all the detailed information and analysis make sure you've covered every area that you have referred to in the introduction and a conclusion which will explain the key findings which describes new questions that a chapter has identified and explains where these questions will be addressed for example in the next chapter or in the conclusion now we come to the conclusion chapter the conclusion recommendation chapters focus on summarizing relationships between the work done the original required research question previous work discussed in the literature and updating this if any new work has emerged suggestions on how you would have done things differently and why implications for practice and policy if any and further research that might be based on your findings methods or concepts you could also include what you have learned as a professional and mention your growth as a result of this research in this chapter now we come to writing a report for a non academic audience when we studied about the scope of social work research in module 2 we learned that research in social work is not restricted to educational in institutions but can take place in the field an organization may choose to undertake a research on their own or may take for the sponsor may do it for a sponsor needs assessment research and evaluation researches may be prerequisites for funding so the researchers for these reports the readers for these reports may not be academicians and hence such reports are very different from academic research reports however you do not compromise on the quality of the report and professional writing standards must be maintained irrespective of the audience of the research report we like we mentioned earlier certain common aspects are there but when you're writing a non uh, uh, such as the card title page the abstract list of contents references etc but when writing a non academic research report you need to keep in mind the specifications of the organization or the person who is paying you to do the report writing first ask if they have any predetermined format for the report ask them about the preferred style of writing okay get this information from them and then you can follow the general uh, structure and the sections of a non academic report the first section of a non academic research report is an executive summary all non academic research reports must have executive summaries which are between 3 and 5 pages long the executive summary will provide a concise and comprehensive summary of the entire report because very often this is the only section that is read by the funder or whoever else wants who wants your research it contains the following a short introduction to the problem the key findings and the suggestions and the recommendations the introduction provides a background or the context for the study mentions presents a brief overview of the organizations involved mentions the aims and rationale for the study discusses the methods that are being used the data collection tools sample selection strategy and analysis plan are also covered in this chapter keep the language simple avoid use of too many technical terms especially when writing about the methodology do not provide too much detail of the methods just mention what you have done and make sure that you set out the action plan and timeline in a very logical manner the results chapters depending on the type of research you may have more than one results chapter 
For example, a needs assessment, the first chapter could focus on demographic data, while the second could deal with the needs being assessed. If you have multiple respondents, once again, each, uh, uh, for example, your beneficiaries and the uh, uh, respondents are also the key uh, stakeholders and staff of the organization. So you could have one chapter that gives all the data from the beneficiaries, one that gives from uh, data from the key stakeholders, and the third one that deals with data from the uh, team or the organizational staff. The results chapter will present the findings of the study very clearly in crisp, simple language. Okay? You need to use graphs and charts to support the numeric data where necessary and quotes from the respondents to support qualitative data. In a non-academic research study please, report, please make sure that all the tables are placed alongside the text for easier reading. Then you come to the conclusion and recommendations chap uh, chapter for a non-academic report. It will provide a summary of the key findings along with recommendations and suggestions to improve the program or problem that is being studied. You could also provide suggestions for future intervention as well as ideas for future research projects. To summarize, writing a research document report is an integral aspect of a research process. A research document provides details of the research study conducted by the researcher. You might need to make multiple revisions of your research report. The three types of research reports include quantitative reports, qualitative reports and reports for non-academic audiences. All three have different structures and require different styles of writing. Thank you for your attention. I hope you learnt a lot in this module.